Welcome to this demo on the JVM settings in the WAS version 8 integrated solutions console. Here we will touch on the three components of interest in this demo and how they tie together. In parentheses I have also noted the components acronym since both are commonly used. The first is Web3 application server, sometimes just called WAS. Next is the Java Virtual Machine, or the JVM, and finally the Integrated Solutions Console, or the ISC. Now a bit on how the three components fit together. The Web3 application server is a Java-based server and requires a Java Virtual Machine environment to run and support the enterprise applications that run on it. As part of configuring your application server, you can configure the JVM to tune performance and system resource usage. In a typical network deployment environment, three JVMs can be found. The three JVMs are for the deployment manager, the node agent, and the Web3 application server. In this demo, we'll look at the JVM settings for the application server. The JVM settings for the deployment manager and the node agent are similar to the application server, but the path to the ISC is slightly different. Please refer to the resource documents for their paths if needed. The Integrated Solutions Console is for administrating tasks in your WAS environment. Now let's have a look at the Integrated Solutions Console of WAS. On this box, I have WAS version 8 running in the Integrated Solutions Console login page is displayed. I'll go ahead and log on to the uh, ISC right now. This is the welcome page of the Integrated Solutions Console. From it, we can see we have WAS version 8, Fixed Pack 4 installed. For this demo, we will navigate through the ISC to the JVM settings screen and touch on each of the JVM settings. From the left frame, I'll expand the servers tab and the server types, Web3 application server, server, a new window comes up and we're going to go under here, contents over here on the right frame here and, and work our way down to the server infrastructure section. And here we'll, we're going to expand the Java and process management and select the process definition. And from this new page come up to under additional properties and select the Java virtual machine. Okay, now we're on the configuration tab of the JVM setting page. Note, for any JVM setting change made, be sure to apply and save your changes, then restart the server to pick up your changes. Okay, back to the settings themselves. So if a class path or a boot class path needs to be added to the JVM, this is where they would be added to the respective fields. Next are the three verbose debug output options. They are the class loading, garbage collection, in the JNI. Of the three listed, the verbose garbage collection is often used since it can be useful for performance tuning and troubleshooting the JVM. If a verbose garbage collection is needed, just put a check in the box. The verbose garbage collection debug output is written to the server's native standard air log in the log slash servers directory. Next, we have the heap size. The initial and maximum heap size can be used to help tune the JVM's performance in your environment. Out of the box, the default for the initial heap size is 50 megabytes, and the maximum heap size is 256 megabytes for distributed platforms. Next is the run HPROF. The run HPROF specifies whether to use the HPROF profiler support. If you do enable run HPROF, then you must specify arguments for the HPROF arguments section. Moving along, we have the debug mode. The debug mode specifies whether to run the JVM in the debug mode. If you do enable debug mode, then you must specify arguments in the debug's argument section. The default argument is shown below. One note, if you are debugging multiple servers, make sure the default port number 7780 is only used on one server and that all the servers being debugged have unique port numbers. 
Next is the generic JVM arguments. The generic JVM arguments specifies command line arguments to pass to the JVM code that starts the application server process. The resource documents provide a few command line arguments for this setting. The second to last setting is, is the executable jar file name. The executable jar file name specifies a full path name for the executable jar file that the JVM code uses. If you need to enter an executable jar, this is where it is entered. The last setting is the disabled JIT setting. The disabled JIT, or just-in-time compiler, specifies whether to disable the just-in-time compiler option of the JVM code. Note, in this case, if the box is not checked, the just-in-time compiler is enabled, which is the default. This concludes what I want to cover in this demo. For additional details, see the resource documents. Thank <laughs> you.